the theme of the message tonight is the joy is in the journey, not the destination. And what I mean by that is that you'll hear my story through everything, but a lot of the times we think that when we get somewhere, then everything's going to be okay. When I get that college scholarship, everything's good. When I get the straight A's, life's good. When I make the honor roll, whatever that might be destination-wise, we feel like once I achieve something, then I feel fulfilled. But it, the opposite is true. Our fulfillment comes through our journey and the things that we go through along that journey throughout the course of a season, a school year, and a lifetime. For me, I grew up in Peoria, Arizona. A lot hotter there, right? 110, 115, pretty consistently throughout the summers. And very big baseball town. Um, growing up, I'm the oldest of six kids, three of which are adopted. So me being the oldest, I got thrown into the babysitter role very early. Um, three of which are adopted and have disabilities. So uh, one's autistic, the other one's got schizophrenia pretty badly, and the other one RAD, which is separation from birth. So I was exposed to mental health at a young age, at about 13, when we adopted my siblings. Now, I had no idea what any of this stuff was like. Just like a lot of you guys, just growing up, playing video games, having fun outside, playing sports, being pretty active. I was pretty kind of just really foreign to the whole deal. And at the age of 14, I remember my sister tried to commit suicide twice, once when she was 11, once when she was 12. And it really just opened my eyes to the mental side of life. So today, for us, through this journey, a lot of people are struggling with different things. They go through life. We all have different backgrounds at home family settings, et cetera, but the, the experiences that we go through are shaping us for our future. So never forget that. The things that you go through today are helping you in your future for some reason for another opportunity. We're looking to be better leaders, and I think the best cultures and the best teams aren't always the most talented teams or the deepest teams. They're the most connected teams. They're teams that work together the best, that support each other the best, and that go to war in the trenches together. And growing up as a, as a freshman, I go into high school, we're at a very competitive high school, and here I am being chosen to go up to the varsity level. But my first thought and instinct was, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. Has anybody here ever thought that before? Like, I'm not good enough to take the field, I'm not good enough in the classroom, I'm not good enough for somebody else. And that was my very first thought, I'm not good enough to compete at this level. Thankfully, leadership-wise, I see two of my senior catchers, right? They're big dudes. They come up to me right away. Hey, Byler, you belong here, right? You belong here with us. They're 18, I'm 14. They didn't use their age as an excuse to discriminate or push me away. They didn't use their, their three years on varsity and grinding with some really good athletes. They didn't use their college scholarship to trump over me and say, hey, I'm better than you. They came up to me first thing when I stepped on that field and welcomed me to the team. And I saw how much that meant to me because I still remember it today 15 years ago. And when somebody believes in you and shows that, especially from peer to peer and teammate to teammate, you can go anywhere as a team. And my goal, my dream, my vision was professional athletics. I wanted to be a professional athlete, play 10 years for the New York Yankees, make a lot of money, have a sweet car, have a huge house. And so those were my goals, those were my dreams. And I'm in this season, in the middle of the spring, towards the end of our year, and I've got zero offers to go to college. And I'm sitting here thinking, one, am I good enough? Self-doubt creeps in. Number two, am I ever going to find this opportunity? And number three, now I'm a little pissed off because I know I'm good enough to play at the next level, but I don't have the opportunity yet, right? The power of yet. Everything in life happens for a reason. And for each one of us in this room, a lot of us count ourselves out. We discount ourselves. Instead of realizing, hey, I might not be where I want to be yet. Maybe I'm a freshman or I'm an underclassman, or maybe I'm a junior or senior, and I just haven't quite peaked but our time's coming if we put in the work. I can guarantee that for you. I get the opportunity, I sit down with the coaching staff, they offer me a scholarship, I decide, hey, I'm gonna sign and go to college. Right now I'm going to the University of Nevada, I've got my opportunity, I've worked really hard for this, like let's go, right, it's go time. I get, get to Nevada my first year, a lot of adversity, right? It's 6 a.m. waits, it's early mornings, you're staying in a dorm, there's a lot of distractions, there's a lot of things that start happening when you get to that collegiate level. And so I'm in this, this situation, I get to the middle of the fall, it's probably somewhere in the middle of October, and I'm sitting there, I mean, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm tired of the cold, I don't like it, I feel like super tight and tense. I want to go home back to Arizona because I'm comfortable there. And so we felt like it was a really negative environment to be in. Well, halfway through, I know I'm not going to play this year because I'm a freshman, I'm new to the team, I'm not playing very well, but life's all about opportunity. I get into the spring, I go in, I get to play a little bit, I go back to that fall and I'm ready, right? I'm ready to go, and I have a great season. Right? I go through that spring, I'm crushing it, I'm hitting about 350, lead the league in home runs, beating Aaron Judge, all these great statistics on paper. 
and then adversity hits. I get hit with an injury. Am I ever gonna be the same as I was before this injury? When I get back, am I gonna be as good as I was before? Am I gonna be able to run the same, hit the same, move the same? And at this point, I'm thinking, like self-doubt creeps in, what do I do? And my two opportunities that summer are incredible, right? First opportunity, Team USA. I get to go play for the, for the Team USA. We go to Cuba, you go to all these great places and go play for the summer, 100% of them get drafted. The backup plan, Cape Cod Baseball League, 85% of them get drafted. So now I've got these two opportunities right in front of me, but I'm hurt. What do I do? Well, I'm trying to get through it, trying to push through the pain physically at the time, and it just became too much for me. Right? I got the shooting laying down my leg, um, just too much pain, right? And so I decide, hey, I, I got to sit out. There's nothing else I can do. But ironically, a teammate of mine, this is how our teammates' influences on us can either help us or hurt us. This teammate just got surgery on his arm. When you get this crazy rotator cuff surgery, what do you get in return? You get a big old bottle of painkillers. Look, by the way, why don't you try one of these? Just try one, go out and see how you play, see how you feel. Said, all right, Aleve's not working, ibuprofen's not working, Tylenol's not doing anything, why not try it? I don't wanna sit out because I've got two opportunities to go play this summer that I can't miss out on. Ego creeps in, I'm 20 years old, I wanna go get to the next level, I'm gonna do anything in my power to get there. He gives me one, I go out, I play, two for four, a couple doubles, have a great game. Right, I go have some success. I'm like, oh, it's not bad. I felt good. I could move again. I say, hey, b can I get one more of those, please? Just one more. Next day, Saturday. Sunday comes along. Hey, b can I get one more, please? And what started that year in 2013 led to a five year addiction. Now I'm at this point where I have a chance to be chosen in the MLB draft. And I'm ecstatic, right? I'm excited. But the same habits and decisions are taking place off the field. I'm still using the same things every day to get through the pain. It turned from physical pain to emotional pain just to mask the anxiety and the pressure that I felt as a high-performing athlete. And now it's draft day. I've got the opportunity to be drafted. I'm going in open-minded. Right? I really don't care what happens. I'm just going to sign wherever I get drafted because I have no leverage anymore. Arizona Diamondbacks, they call in the 11th round and they draft me. Well, that's my hometown team. Now I'm fired up. My man, hometown team, had tickets as a kid. This is the greatest experience that you could ever have. Like everything that I was doing, all these habits and decisions I was making in college, I'm done with, throw it away. I'm moving on, new opportunity, change of scenery. This is gonna be amazing. Get out there in that summer, Missoula, Montana, small town up in Montana, have a great summer, right? Lead the league in homers, extra base heads. I have a ton of success, all-star. We win the championship, top 20 prospect. So now in my head, my thoughts are, Fast track to the big leagues, right? I'm going high A, double A. Two years, I'm going to the big leagues. Move over. I'm coming for your spot. That's where my plans were. But it's crazy how my plans and God's plans don't align all the time, do they? Right? We have these own plans in our head of I can do this, this, and this. And when I get there, it's going to be like this. But in reality, it never really goes as we plan it. So I get out there in the summer, have a great season, get called back for this thing called Instructs, where the top 20 dudes get invited back to the, the spring training complexes and you go play about four more weeks of baseball. We're about halfway through, and I'm having a lot of success again. I'm on the fast track, everything's going good, I'm dominating, and then I get back from one of the complexes, I'm walking in through double doors, very similar to out there, and our third base coach is sitting outside the doors with a clipboard and his glasses halfway down, giving everybody a nux. Hey, good work today, hey, go get a shower, go get some food, good work, come back tomorrow, ready to go. And then he gets to me. Father, come with me to my office. I need to speak to you for a second. If you've ever been sent to the principal's office, your coach's office, your parents' room, or anywhere where somebody said, hey, I need to talk to you for a second, you know how I feel. I go in, he's sitting on the left, GM of scouting sitting on the right, and they sit me down, they're like, all right, Father, like, we need to speak to you. I'm like, okay, this is not good. Right? I get that intuition, like, this is a terrible, this is something bad's about to happen. They go, look, by the way, we're sorry to inform you, but you failed the drug test. You're going to miss the next 50 games of next season, right? 50 games. You get 142, you're missing 50 of them, right? You're missing a third of your season, canceled, gone, because of the decisions that I was making off the field in the darkness when nobody else was watching for four or five years, starting in college all the way through professional sports. And they go, hey, man, hey, we're going to be here for you, but on Friday there's going to be a nasty article written about you. You're going to have to answer some questions. 
That's great. Now it becomes public. Everybody's going to know. And now I don't know what to do. I'm this nice, like homegrown dude who's never done anything wrong, super positive and very excited. But I've got these enemies and battles that I'm fighting internally that nobody else knows about. Right? Very similar to a lot of us in here and people in our households, right? our parents, our grandparents, our family members and our coaches. And now I've got to step up to the plate and find a way to learn from this experience. I get through it, that adversity hits, I go back, play a couple more seasons, I'm struggling to really figure it out and, and find a way through, um, and then end up getting released in 2018. But in 2018, I started to change my life around, my daily habits, the things that we're gonna talk about here in a minute, and the things that can help lead to consistent success. Not just success on the field or on the court, but in your own lives. Because that one day, your sport's gonna end. But who are you outside of your uniform? So using this story, right, I want to share it with you because, one, all of us go through something challenging in our life, whether it's as drastic as that or something simple like, hey, I didn't get food for one day, or whatever it might be, we all struggle with certain things. No matter who you are, what you do, you can be a leader too. Right? Leadership has no titles. Leadership doesn't mean you got to be the best player on the team. You can be the worst player on the team and be the best leader on that team. You can be the least athletic person on your organization or in this school and still be a positive leader for other people just by your actions and how you show up and treat people with your voice, your words, and your daily actions. So I'll give you 30 seconds. You can find a partner, it doesn't have to be in your teams, it can be if you want. Find a partner, come find me, let's go. Head, shoulders, knees, shoulders, knees, shoulders, knees, head, cup. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Ears, knees, toes, hips. <laughs> Ears, eyes, holders, holders, shoulders, hips, head, go. <laughs> let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. There's three things that you can control every single day in your life, right? And they're very simple, right? I can't control who catches the touchdown pass, who's the best volleyball player in here, or who's got the best feet in soccer. I can't control those things. I can't control what the ref does, what my coach says, what my parents do, or what happens out around here with fires or any of that stuff, right? I can't control any of that. It's totally out of my control. But what I can control is number one, my attitude. What's my attitude when I step through the doors? Am I gonna bring the baggage off the field into my competition or am I gonna check it and move on? The second thing, my effort, right? The effort level that I give in the classroom, the effort I give on campus, the effort I give in my sport or my conditioning or the things that I do every single day, my effort is 100% in my control. And then the third one, and I'm huge on this, right? The energy that I bring to my teammates or my classmates, right? The energy. Negative energy is incredibly contagious, but so is positive energy. And the energy that I bring to whatever situation, my team, my classroom, my parents, my family, my siblings, can help them or it can hurt them. But the more energy that I bring, the more positive energy that I bring, the better direction we're gonna be on. Right? There's, I like reading and there's a really good bo book called Row the Boat by John Gordon and then Minnesota's head football coach, PJ Fleck. And the analogy that they use is, everybody's gotta be on the boat if you make the team. Right, in a town like this, where you have no options, everybody who comes and tries out is probably on the team. Right? Whether you're number 14 or number one on the volleyball team, number 30 on the football team or number one, it doesn't matter if I'm a freshman or a senior, you're on the boat. But how many of us are bringing our oar and our paddle, and then how many of us are rowing in the right direction? The more people that we can get rowing in the same direction, the better our program's gonna be. It's all about being a good teammate. So just because you might not be the most talented, just because you might not be the best, just because you might not be the most popular, none of that stuff matters, right? It's all fake noise. It's what are you willing to do and the values that you operate on every single day? And what are you gonna to bring to the people around you? I hope that this was helpful for somebody here. I hope somebody took something out of this. My goal every day is just one nugget. Take one nugget out of somebody that you meet, a coach, a teacher, a parent, a friend, somebody at the grocery store or wherever you're going to eat, right? Take one nugget out of it because you can learn from everybody that you come across. But adversity only sharpens your sword. And the challenges that you go through are only gonna help you in your future. But we've gotta believe that. I've gotta believe that. We can't allow our circumstances to dictate how I feel each and every day. Because some of us have tough circumstances and other of us are very, very blessed. But what are we gonna do with what we have each and every day that's in my control, my attitude, my energy, and my effort? <laughs> Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First of all, shout out to Dalton Crowley for winning the $50 last week. 
any new subscribers by our video release next Friday will be eligible for a chance to win 50 bucks. Be sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell, and again, thank you so much for watching.